Hi everyone, welcome into the Academy for another video. Lovely to have you along for another one. My name is Warren Bennett, we've got the main man lying down there. He's pretty chill this evening, so we shouldn't have too much problems on Trev, let's hope not. Um, this is all about footwork, this video. And footwork is so important of how we use our feet when we swing the club, because having the incorrect footwork can have a detrimental effect with other parts of the body during the swing. We see that quite a lot in the academy ranging from a chip shot all the way through to a driver. So this footwork is pretty um, universal for whatever club you use. We have people that overslide, or we have people that stay back into their rear leg there. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna work on those two areas. I'm gonna show you little exercises you can do for both. So you've got to first understand, are you a slider or are you someone who stays back too much and keeps their back foot on the ground for too long. So I'm going to get on to the first one, the people who slide too much. So those people are generally going to be what we see is mainly the lower handicap, the more elite player, um, the junior golfer who wants to try and create too much power. So let me get onto that and then I'll get onto the ones who stay on the back foot after that. Right, so people who slide too much and we generally, like I said, see that with a lot of players that are lower handicappers. Not saying that's all of them, but generally people who get stuck on the inside, hook it and block it too much. If you get too slidey, so you're sliding your hips too early, you get stuck underneath it, and then you have to rip it over with your hands. That's where the hook comes from. Right, so one exercise that we can do, and I did this a lot myself, is you're making sure you get to the top of the backswing creating a nice coil with your hips and your belly button. And then from here, what you want to try and do, the initial transition, so I would say seven eighths of the way up to kind of halfway down, left arm parallel, you really want to be feeling this squat into the ball. So remember, this is for someone who's a little bit active with their right side. So what you really want to try and keep this passive and keeping this passive allows the arms to drop in front of them. And that, what that does, that levels out my hips levels out my torso and I'm able to rotate more. So this is, isn't, just for a word of warning, someone who comes over the top and slices it. Right, so you're gonna create a little bit of squat. So you can see my right knee still as I look down over my right foot. That allows me to drop my club and my arms in the slot and then I'm good to rotate. So you might have seen this before. What can I do it with? Okay, we've got a bucket here. Right, bucket in between my legs. This is going to give me feedback, nice and smooth, drop and turn through. So remember, this is the person who's stuck underneath it, so it's good for rotation. But remember, you've got to have a, a level foundation, which is hips and knees, to be able to rotate. If you're stuck and slide, you're going to be tilted and you're going to have to stall with your body. So this is showing you how much I can kind of Squat, let my knees kind of flare out a little bit. Might be exaggerated. But it just gives you that kind of delay to allow the clubs to allow the club and your arms to drop in the slot before you turn. So basically, it's getting the club out in front of you without you trying to pull the club and get the club out in front of you. Okay, so do one more with this. Right, so let's chuck that to the side. Let's do some without that bucket because it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. Right, so we're going to go drop in the slot, turn through. So a little breakdown so we can kind of feel it and be aware of it as much as we can while we're in motion. I'm a great believer in getting some coil away from the ball. Nice width at the top of the backswing to allow the arms to drop. Squat, so what I'm doing, I kind of Exaggeration, I'm going that way. So I've still got my right heel on the ground, halfway down. Halfway down, remember, is left arm parallel. Now I'm able to turn through. Doesn't really matter, you can hear it, it's a little bit fat, a little bit matty, but it doesn't matter, because we're just working on the structure of the leg action. Now, that rotation is gonna give you that compression. It's gonna keep your hands and arms your hands ahead of the club face. There's your compression. If you get stuck underneath it and slide, 
you're going to have to flick it and you're going to lose power. It might look quicker and it might look flashier, but it's not going to go as far. Compression and getting the right angle of attack into the ball, that's the secret to long hitting without having to flash it. Right, one more with, uh, with stopping. So you can see a massive exaggeration with my knees are getting further apart. My right thigh doesn't really do a lot. It's still staying back. And it allows the right arm, right elbow to fall in front of you. Then really kind of take some pace off it. Take the revs off the swing. So we're going to go, I don't know, 30%. That gives you the awareness while you're in motion. Really important. Right, gonna really keep from this halfway down position, then you can start letting everything go and firing it. Squat and release. And then you can start squaring it up. And you square it up by rotation, all you hookers of the ball and sliders. You can see whilst the ones I kind of stopped, I wasn't hitting it great. The ones now without stopping, now I've got that kind of flow back into my swing and I can join all those dots up. Really squat and rotate, squat and rotate, I mean. And you can ramp that speed up. So there's the, there's the feel with those guys who are sliders, whose right knee gets too active, too early, and then you have to stall it. So remember, keeping that right knee back by squatting down, pushing that right knee out, obviously not too far. And the barometer of that is you're keeping your right heel on the ground. You can do this too much, but your right knee, right heel will start coming up. So you can squat, release. Right, let's get on to the people that are over the top and the poor footwork we see there. Actually, folks, what I've, just, I've just thought of a little exercise whilst I was picking the balls up here with the bucket again. If you put the bucket against your right heel and now it's kind of, you can see it's touching my ankle, my calf there, the outside of it. Now, people who slide, obviously you're going to create more gap away from it. And what you're wanting to do, you're wanting to try and keep that calf Again, so it's a great little feedback exercise. Remember, it's a blink and you blink and you miss it. So if you're not sure, just keep the, take the ribs off it, just early doors. Really makes you wait for it. Gets the club out in front of you a bit more. Right, I'm gonna keep that as much as I can against the bucket. Remember, if it's new, don't expect an absolute miracle straight away. It might take a dozen shots or so to get used to it. Remember, if you stand there and hit 20 balls, that's quite a lot of time. Should take like 10 minutes to hit those. You know, 10 minutes of something new. It's quite a lot, quite a long time, so don't get impatient. I'm going to keep that against, keep that against. And then off. So good feedback exercise, love feedback exercises. Bucket the range next time. Or you could put something down there, I don't, I'm not sure what, but you can put like a box or something down there. Or your practice ball bag. Okay, let's get on to the over the toppers. Right folks, let's get on to the uh, people who are kind of slice the ball over the top. Don't create the speed and power they would like. This is the footwork we generally see them do. So they get to the top of the backswing, they keep their right foot on the floor, but more importantly, their right foot, they're doing it exaggerated, their right foot and their right ankle goes outside. Now you can see, if I do that, I'm, no way am I going to be able to get forward of the ball and create the compression. It's going to want to influence the club by throwing it outside and casting. Then you're probably going to cut across it, hold on to it. When people start playing, they want to try and lift it up in the air. So the instinct is to go that way. So we see that a lot, actually. So people finishing with their back leg and their back heel behind their toe. And you can see it's opposite to the person who's wanting to go towards the target. And a result of that, so the effect of that, Someone who does that initially, I'm, just, I'm probably doing it more than someone does, but I'm doing it for effect, is what happens, they try and create the power by their top half because it allows their top half to be open too much there. So it can have a massive detrimental effect to how the sequence and order of the golf swing. And obviously, 
If you get this wrong, the club's pretty much got no chance to swing correctly from there and create the power, compression, all those lovely things we want. So, I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the people who are kind of inside and slidey. But I'm going to put this time the bucket on the inside. There's two ways you can do this. You can put the bucket on the outside again and try and miss it. But I quite like the feeling of actually trying to kind of influence something. So the first move from the top of the backswing, even seven eighths of the way up, remember not for you sliders, for you over the toppers, is you want to feel some pressure on the inside of your toe there. So your toe line, you want to basically feel like you're inside your big toe there not on the outside of it. So your left, your heel needs to be ahead of your toes, your big toe. Only for a split second, you want a bit, little bit more roll. You don't want to be doing that too much because I don't want you hurting your knees or anything like that. So it doesn't have to be done too much for too long, but it's just a split second of the heel kicking in and obviously the knee as well. And then after that, it has to lift up. So it's not anything that you need to do all the way through your swing because you're going to hurt yourself and hurt your back as well. But it's a split second of allowing this heel to kick in inside of your shoe, not on the outside of your shoe, and really forcing everything forward. And that keeps your head back automatically and you can see now you've got this kind of reverse C look which allows the club to swing from the inside a little bit more. So, and now I'm trying to influence it by moving it. And that's a better feel, I think, because you can actually feel something. You actually feel that kind of resistance as you move. Because if you move it, you know you've actually worked and done something. Okay, let's take some pace off it. And you can always do some practice swings. If it's new, you could always do some practice swings at home. You can put anything there. You can put like your practice ball bag, a little box or something. And you're really trying to influence and push that until the club gets about to around here, left arm parallel, and then you just let the club go. Remember, the head stays nice and still. You're not trying to influence it by leaning with your head. You're doing all this with your right leg only. You can see there, the transition, I really got going there. But if I wanted to hook it, this is what I want to do. If I had a tree I had to go around, Obviously, I'd aim right a little bit, but I'd really try and get that way as much as I can, and I can rip my hands over. So if you want to change your path, change your compression, influence a bit more speed into your golf swing, especially if you're over the top, this is what you want to do. Push, slide on the inside of your shoe, folks. If you had your mobile phone on the outside of your shoe, you want to try and get off that feel like there. So that's one exercise you can do with a bucket. The range, beautiful exercise, and you can feel that on the course. Imagine re bucket on the inside, and you're really feeling like you're really going as much as you can. Remember to release your right knee and release your right foot up. It doesn't stay stuck like that. It's only the initial kind of first third to half on the way down. And you've got to let it go after that. So there's two areas of how we can use correct footwork there, folks. Remember, Good footwork has a big influence of what's going on above as well. Good foundations for the golf swing. Really good ones to take to the golf course because you can't think of three or four things on the golf course while we swing the club because in a perfect world, yeah, it'd be great just to swing there, swing and don't think. But I think it's good to take a feel onto the golf course, be able to take something to the course so it has a good influence on everything else. And like we've always said, it's trying to find that one thing that can influence the four things and good footwork is really good, is really one of them. Every time you see the TV, watch the pros, and they're always gonna be a little passive in the transition because they don't want the slide, remember, but from about halfway down, they are off and running. Very rarely you're seeing that, I'd say, if ever. I don't think there's one tour pro that has a footwork and an ankle that goes that way. They're always through this way, you can see. Slow them down, look on YouTube about different swings and they're seeing every single one is going that way. Hopefully that's of some interest to you everyone. So please let me know how you get on. Please let, you, please let me know if you have any questions on this and I'll be happy to answer them as best as I can. So from myself and a very sleepy Trev in the corner there, we'll see you on the next one. Have a good golfing week and I'll see you next Friday.
Cheerio.